Welcome back. Last time we left off, I had just finished priming the gas tank, the cowl and the fender. This will be a bit more colorful of an episode. If you're new here by the way, we're working on my Suzuki GS550 tracker project. The dent I tried to fill in the last episode is unfortunately still visible. So we're going to apply a guide coat and see if we can set it out. A guide coat makes it easier, since the black gives good contrast to the grey primer. The name of the game is to sand and smooth everything out until there's nothing left of the darker paint. In this shot we can clearly see the dent by the way. The primer was just a little bit too thin to completely fill the low spot in the dent. This was very unfortunate. It also means that we get another opportunity to use some more of the primer that I bought. After another couple of layers of primer, another round of guide coat and sanding were looking much better. I sanded through ever so slightly in two places. So before it's time to move on, I gave the tank a few thin layers from a regular spray can. Just to cover those spots in order to restore some rust protection. My theory to why I sanded through is that a dent does not only cause a low spot. It also creates a ridge, sort of a volcano shape. And this is very hard to get out just by using filler. Ideally, I would have used a hammer to knock down that edge before applying body filler. But I am nowhere near confident enough to take a hammer to my gas tank. So this will have to do, even though you'll probably be able to see some remnants of the dent once I'm finished. Now we're finally at the spot where it's time to move on to some actual color. I did not submit a color code for my metallic base coat. I simply put down a note that I wanted a bright silver. This was a mistake. The color I got was Masta 32B. Uh, while being silver, it also has a very uncharming dentist green tint. But I have no one to blame but myself for being lazy with the research. Next up it was time for the flake, and here I got into some trouble due to inexperience. I had googled the mixing ratio, and what I found was 2 teaspoons per 1000 milliliters. However, this was not nearly enough. On top of that, the website where I bought the flake did not have a great selection. They only had one type of silver, and in the description it clearly stated it, that it was sprayable through a 1.8 millimeter nozzle. Which to be fair, it was, but the size turned out to be 0.025 inches, which as far as flake goes, is enormous. That means that it will not spray as easily, and the surface afterwards will be hard to deal with. The result I got was underwhelming. The coverage was poor, and the surface was really bad, especially where the flake did not lay down properly. I had to reevaluate and course correct. I did some research and ordered some microflake, which is 0.004 inches from Germany with express shipping, and two days later I could continue. I also did some more digging with regards to the mixing ratios. As it turns out, it varies a lot. If you're going to cover a light surface with silver flake, you want to use roughly 12 tablespoons per 1000 milliliters. A dark surface, the range is larger, so from 4 to 12 tablespoons. For a small colored flake, the recommendation is about 3 tablespoons. This was an annoying subject to learn about. Much of the information out there is put out by experienced painters that have a good feel for how much flake they should add. So much of the information is very general. For example, 2 heaping spoons per quartz. What does that even mean? The ratio was super important for me as well. Since I'm mixing up such a small batch, my tolerances are less than if I were to, for example, paint an entire car. So for clarity's sake, I mixed up 140 to 150 milliliters of sprayable product. To that I added 25 milliliters of flake. I took no chances this time. As soon as the product was in the gun, I was constantly agitating to keep the flake from settling. Also, I poured the mixture out between coats and sprayed a small amount of thinners through the gun for good measure. Since last time, I got an inexpensive pressure regulator for the gun. I was curious of the pressure drop between the regulator of the compressor and the gun itself. I had one of those orange thin spiral hoses, roughly 3 meters long. 
With the gun regulator as open as it could be, it shows a pressure drop of 2.5 bars. How much of that is the new regulator? Well, your guess is as good as mine. After the flake, the tank got a couple of layers of clear coat to give me material to sand away to improve the finish. I began with an 800 grit wet paper. I used a tiny block made out of plywood with a bit of foam I got with a lithium iron battery when I bought that. A spray bottle of water with a bit of dish soap came in handy. I was vigilant here. I did not want to sand through. So I probably left some results on the table, but better safe than sorry. While I was at it, I gave the underside attention. The primer had cracked in hard to reach places where I didn't get good penetration with the fan of the spray gun. I wire brushed those areas and painted them with a brush. There was also a drop of clear coat at the edge of the underside. I sanded it down and brushed on a bit of primer locally. Taping out the design was the next logical step. I played around with some fine line tape until I was happy with the outline. Then I traced it onto some transparent plastics, which then could be fitted and copied to the opposite side. A string was a helpful tool here in order to measure from the center line to get an equal location on both sides. I have no experience taping out graphics, so I took measurements and used paper templates as guides for the rest of the design. Then it was a matter of masking off the area that was next up for painting. I'm using newspaper, it is not ideal. Paint can bleed through if you're unlucky, especially because of there are holes near the edges of some newspapers. But I'm using a lot of layers here, hopefully I'll be fine. I am mixing up the orange candy. The cups I'm using are 700 milliliters, which is too large for the batches. It's difficult to get the ratio accurate. I would recommend a cup with less volume. The goal was 10% candy concentrate, but I'm unsure how much I've actually added. But it looked good on the mixing stick, so I went for it. And here is how it turned out. It looks promising. Watch the next episode, where we do the rest of the graphics and finish off the paintwork. We might even fit the parts to the bike. Have a good one.